we welcome your presence omnipotent omniscient the all wise the all the strong and the trusted god that sustains all but yet is sustained by now thank you for coming tonight thank you for quickening tonight thank you for speaking tonight let your great name be exalted in our gathering and let your strong hand visit us again and again so that the least among us might become as strong as David. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may be seated. You are welcome to the house of God. Amen. say amen for those of you sitting outside I just received a memo revealing that there are several people that have not found seats um, we, we tried our best but I think we did not see through the vista of the eyes of God however um, the organizing team have taken note of that and they are working seriously to ensure that you don't end up standing this evening. Hallelujah. I saw Pastor Chooks from Dogza International Gospel Center. You're most welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn your Bible with me quickly as we set the coordinate for our adventure. The book of Isaiah chapter 32. Amen. Please help me tell Brother Sabatine it is well. It is well. Hallelujah. It is well. Okay. Isaiah chapter 32. Please reduce the volume a little. There's a tendency for me to shout this night. Tremble ye women. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 11. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. Strip you, make you bare. And gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament. For the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the beautiful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. Because the palaces shall be forsaken. The multitude of the city shall be left. The forts and the towers shall be for dens forever. A joy, joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. The Spirit be poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness and the righteousness shall remain in the fruitful field. The work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, in short dwellings, in the quiet resting places. Second reading Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. Hallelujah. I want to trouble us with those two Bible readings before we begin to advance. Acts of the Apostle chapter 19. 
Hallelujah. Verse 14, the Bible says, And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks also dwelling in at Ephesus, and fear fell upon all of them. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. They brought their amulets. And many of them also, which used curious arts, necromancy and witchcraft, brought their books together. They were, uh, they were carrying out somewhat of uh, witchcraft education. They had compendiums that recorded how to cast spells and the kind of spells that are possible in rainy season and the type that you can concoct in dry season. They were all, there was a compendium that held their wisdom. And the Bible says that all those books were brought together and bond. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. We will need to do that permutation uh, in a moment of time. But my emphasis is verse 20. So, it, you know, it says so mightily. That is, in this way, did the word of God grow huh? mightily and it prevailed. So we'll, we'll work with those two scriptures. Hallelujah. Please stay with me. Don't have time. I just want to share a burden with us. If you check the vision that God had in mind when he began to orchestrate the enterprise of creation. If you check through the pages of the scripture, it's littered across but in hidden places. The kind of civilization that God intended to establish upon the face of the earth in the book of Genesis. That grand plan that was truncated because the devil deceived humankind to orchestrate a feat of rebellion. If we have a glimpse of that which God had in mind, we will understand the kind of damage that has been done to the visible creation on the strength of one act of rebellion. Part of the consequences of that rebellion was that the Holy Spirit, who was supposed to be the essence of this creation, had to be withdrawn because there was a fracture in the principle of government. And what happened in Eden was that Adam declared independence from God. And the only way God can exercise his authority on a creature having the status such as humankind will be a willing submission to the will of God. So that act of rebellion led to the withdrawal of the resources of the Spirit of God. If you turn your Bible to the book of Leviticus, you will find a preacher there. And the preacher is trying to bring us to the understanding of the consequence of the withdrawal of the Holy Spirit from the visible creation. He is called the preacher because he needs to sound an alarm to a creation that has died in that it is separated from the fountain of living waters. The major burden of the preacher is that since the Holy Ghost left this visible creation, the purposes that are held in this visible creation have been condemned to 
circles and cycles vicious circles of degrees of vanity in display because that which would have granted and given meaning to the cycles and the circles of this natural realm was the person of the Holy Ghost. In fact, the book of Psalms put it this way. He said, they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The usage of the word foundation in that scripture or the closest relative to the Hebrew word, the Aramaic word that was used there is manwa. So God created everything with a manwa. And one of the effects of the rebellion of man was that that manwa was withdrawn. And so we have a situation where purpose can no longer be known. And the inevitable consequence is abuse. Because essence has been withdrawn. So we are condemned to an existence of cycles and circles. Cycles of nothingness that have no capacity to strike a chord in the realm of reality. Because that which will bring definition, working principles, and essence has been withdrawn. In the New Testament, you, you realize that God only walks if his spirit is walking. If his spirit stops walking, it means the work of God has stopped. However, some other walks can continue apart from the work of God. That became the possibility that was captured in the visible creation. God was no longer walking in it. In fact, God had gone to start another creation that he can walk in. And if we study our Bible and we take a look at the pages of the book of Revelation, you'll find something significant. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the significant things you'll find is that in the book of Revelation, you will not see Holy Spirit, the entire book. But you will see Spirit. Because the person of the Holy Spirit is the galvanization of that realm. It's the person that gives everything that is functional in the realm in which God dwells is powered by the Spirit of God. Okay, let me give you an example. John was in the Isle of Patmos. And he was there because of the testimony of God. He began to bear testimony of Jesus to a generation that had fallen from the perspective of truth. And he became a victim of persecution. Isolated from civilization and kept on the Isle of Patmos to hunger and so hunger until he diminishes and dies. It was in the midst of that condition that the Bible says on the last day he was in the spirit. When he entered into the spirit through the portals of the mercy of God, he received a summon to appear before the throne of God. Come up here and I will show you things that will take place hereafter. <laughs> there, are, there are things that are predetermined, things that have been ordained that will take place. Are you still with me? Come up! Let me show you the wisdom that governs a civilization that is stronger than flesh and bone, stronger than human government and uh, human, human sectors. Come! And see how the realm of power because the bible says for down dying is the kingdom dying is what power. the power something that is stronger than the will of humankind that in the midst of rebellious people there is a government that that orchestrates its purposes through wisdom that that human rebellion cannot stop the purposes that are captured in her come you need some insight to know that you are only subdued in the natural but there are vast possibilities in the spirit of God explored, even from partners. when he decided to oblige the son that came the bible says immediately he was in the spirit are you with me now the implication of that is that heaven's transport system responded to him because he wanted to fulfill that summon. are you with me now, so the, it was the spirit of God that provided that transport system. And when he, he entered into that transport vehicle, 
he took him to the throne room. So we see that in the spirit realm there is transport. But that transport is powered by what? Holy Ghost. And if you study the guy that taught through heaven, you will find out that there are 12, 12 realities in that guided tour that tells us about how the civilization of heaven is and each of those realities is powered by the spirit. Are you still with me? Now is the kind of civilization we're supposed to operate with here if we had allowed that governor to be the essence of this creation. But that rebellion made him withdraw himself. And it's not that he just withdrew himself. Uh, the implication of his withdrawal is that uh, the manual, the operating manual of every entity upon the face of the earth was lost. So nothing could operate according to reference. There was no longer reference. And so the fall is not just an event. The fall is everything that began to happen from that time. Because vanity is upon vanity. Abomination is upon a civilization that was powered by vainness, purposelessness, began to expand and expound itself. Are you still with me? I like this example I normally give. In the original manual of mosquito. Like all other insects, is supposed to be taking nectar from flowers. Pride of Barbados, hibiscus flowers. But when the manual was withdrawn, mosquitoes started taking blood. <laughs> In the book of Isaiah chapter 32, where we read, we see the obituary of a civilization. A civilization had died. And every terrible thing that could happen had happened. And just in case you think that's the worst that can happen, it now opens the door to other terrible things. And it was a circle, a vicious circle of terrible things was taking place in a city that had a prophesied destiny. Even though the destiny was prophesied, that city could not live up to the civilization of that standard because there was a personality that was missing in their civilization and it was him that held the manual of their oppressions. The Bible says in verse 11, verse 15, that this kind of vicious cycle will continue until the spirit be poor. It's just like an unbeliever right now. Somebody that is a conductor in one of the buses in town, he might have an ordination to be a prophet, but the man who are, that will run his life into that ordination has been withdrawn. And until he makes contact with the Holy Spirit, he will be an evolution of vanity. So when the Spirit comes, it doesn't just come to revive, it comes to restore a manual, a working procedure. That's why I had to consult the other scripture in the book of Acts chapter 19. Are you here? If you read Isaiah from 32, from 15 down, you begin to see what was in the ordination of God for the city. All those things began to take place when the spirit was poured on us from on high. If you go to the book of Acts chapter 19, where I read. You will find out that in that particular city where Paul was ministering, they had a heritage and an educational system of darkness. Not just a heritage of darkness. In terms of witchcraft, in terms of, 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 of altars that were raised in the territory, in terms of, 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 of allegiances, truces that have been caught to subjugate destinies under tyrannical evil spirits. Apart from that, they also had a meticulous educational system from whence they have developed compendiums, historical compendiums of new discoveries in witchcraft and necromancy. They had a wonderful library of that kind of education from generation past. But an event took place. 
some guys saw the ministry of Paul and they felt that wow if there was anything in town to imitate that would capture the attention of people it was this kind of stuff that Paul was doing because it was contrary to um, the natural scheme of things and they attempted to cast out a devil they found a specimen a lunatic specimen I said, well, we have found one specimen here. And they took note, because those guys, are you with me? They are researchers. You know, they have books, compendiums. So they are researchers. So they had gone and seen how Paul was doing it. So they had documented it. That one Paul came and he was driving out spirits in the name of what? So it was on record. They were researchers. They were, they were people that were very interested in spiritual matters. Now that they had gotten the method by which Paul does what he does, they now want to practice it. And you see, they did not... The Paul himself was not aware of the new trade that was about to emerge on the account of copying and pasting his ministry style. He was not aware of that. And the guys did everything that Paul did. They did it right. But unfortunately for them, the results that Paul had, the people did not have. They were not only disappointed, they also had interest, return of investment that came by reason of the attempt. Because when the demon began to query, they now found out that much more than the superficial engagement they were able to see and document is required to prosecute that kind of business. What was wrong was that they didn't have the manual. But they had stuck. You know, some of you, you buy a television set, you don't even read the manual. You just operate. That is Kiva dimension. <laughs> level of inquiry the data bank was scanned the search engine in the spirit and when they searched they found Paul's name the Jesus you quoted and then they searched that means the demon had advanced knowledge of what their names were without an introduction and then he saw that even though the practice was accurate they didn't have any authority to execute that kind of ministry. Now, after they did, before they began to deal with the people, they did research first. Now, you see, the devil is patient too. He didn't strike. If had, because there are some people that you strike by accident, it will cost Satan. There will be so much repercussions for 12 years because you struck. You attempted to strike the wrong person. So, you see, in order to avoid challenge, they ran their names through search engine and found out there was something missing. They had no spiritual identity. They have not been born into the realm. That was when the massaging aspect took place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you realize that it was a failed attempt at casting out devils that made sorcerers. That is a failed attempt. The Peter the, and Paul, the two actors of Acts, when they were not here, what we have is a fake exorcist trying to use the name of Jesus to cast out devils. Are you with me? The real actors were not present. Now, that failed move and the repercussion, the effect of the massaging, was what the real sorcerers head of that led to them coming out and confessing. The first question I have in that scripture is, who did they confess to? It wasn't captured. But they began to confess because somebody attempted to do a fake miracle and he 
the repercussions manifested instantly. The confession was so deep that they went into the archive, the library that they have been building for a long time. And all the resources that were there, they, they now assembled them. And the net worth of those books was what? There's, there are some translations that give us in dollars. $9,500. That's how many naira? Stay with me. They brought these books. And these books were burned. And then there was a commentary. The commentary that was written was to give us an insight of the, the status of the move of God up until that time. Are you there? And that commentary was so mightily grew what? The word that it revealed. Now, if you look at it superficially, you might not understand the true essence of that commentary. You see, over every city you come into, there are curses hanging over the city. And the word of the Lord is also over the city. Looking for expression, looking for establishment. What we read in the book of um, Isaiah chapter 32 from verse 11 are the curses that are over the city that were be being implemented. And the prophet said that is going to be the situation until the spirit is poured upon us from on high. When the spirit is poured upon us from on high, then the manual that was on God's mind for that city will begin to find occasion to take root. It means there is a word of the Lord that has been spoken over the city, but it, 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 it has not yet found occasion to infiltrate the civilization and become the current state of things. Now, it, before that word of the Lord is revealed, before it begins to manifest, first of all, Something must happen to the heritage of sorcery. Are you with me? The heritage of witchcraft. The heritage of necromancy. So the apostles did something in the realm. So that, so, such that it took a failed attempt to cast a devil. To, that was the spark. They did something. Because... In my own opinion, if somebody comes to your village and he says he wants to drive out a spirit, and then the evil spirit in the person reacts and beats the person, can that bring revival? <laughs> eh? Can that be the reason why the move of God? But the apostles, they did something. And that failed attempt became the trigger. Not a preacher, not an evangelist. Somebody trying to cast out devils in the name of Paul. He used the name illegally. And they saw the repercussion. Sorcerers came out and began to confess. That was something that was not planned. It was a council that was beginning to come to pass. The council of God that was hanging over the city began to come to pass in that city. And we saw the evidence of that council in that sorcerers were confessing people were beginning to submit to the authority of God and the Bible says that that intent that God had for the city we began to see it materialize because the spirit of God has come back with the manual when revival comes the manual for tribes for people groups is downloaded from heaven. For instance, we have picked it. Okay, I have picked it. That the Thief nation was raised as an intercessory nation. I picked it. It's in the manual. It's in the manual. That I know very well. Alright? Now, it is possible for people in Lagos to run ministry on motivational 
and public speaking mechanics and techniques. It's possible. But just in case you bring that kind of product here, consistent with the manual, you're actually in error. Because it is that counsel of God for the city that needs to mightily grow. And so in order for you to be accurate, you must have a means by which you can peep into the manual for the territory. And then your life should be structured according to such a manual. It means you are in alignment. You are going to be one of the grounds that God will set his foot upon in order to begin to enter into the territory. Because your life is aligned to his will territorially. Not just spiritually as in salvation, but territorially. You are doing the things that God wants to see in that territory. It is on the strength that your life will become a contagious element. That can release incense into the spirit so that even a failed attempt at ministry can become the reason for what? In the book of Second Kings, chapter 22, a great king had come into power. And he was one of the privileged ones that stepped into that level of authority at a tender age. And he decided to study the life of David and to align himself to the life of David. And the Bible says he did not turn to the left or to the right. The example of David was his template. That means the guy had a desire for alignment. He had a desire for accuracy with God. He wanted to carry God. He wanted to see God express himself. When he had gone 18 years into government, he decided to send the secretary of his cabinet to take a message to the temple. That all the guys that were in, embarking upon the renovation work in the temple, he said, first of all, all the monies that came as willful offering that came into the house of God for the purpose of renovation they should quantify they should audit it they should give, make a statement about it they did that he also told that secretary to ensure that the money was handed out to the four men the guys that were marshalling out laborers for the work so that the work were not slack and the bible also added that those four men did not need to be audited because they were faithful. Are you with me? Then as the renovation was going on, and a particular part of the temple was broken down in order to, to renovate it, they now found a scroll. Hallelujah. They found what? A scroll. And the secretary took the scroll back to the king and read it to the king. That was the manual of how they were supposed to operate. Even though he had the heart to, to be accurate and David was his template. What God required at that time was much more than the example of David. When the guy finished hearing the reading of the manual, he knew that God, who was a righteous judge, was going to bring destruction upon the city. He mobilized intercessors instantly. But, unfortunately for him, God had already decreed that it will happen. And God is such that his words cannot be withdrawn if he speaks his law. But because the guy decided to intercede, oh, God said, alright, it will not happen in your time. You will rule well. You will go and join your ancestors. But this decree will still come to pass. Now, he was trying for 18 years. For 18 years, David was his template. But he was operating without a manual. His good intentions were not sufficient to satisfy the demands of the immortal realm. I assure you, you don't know the full meaning of your life. 
until you have a glimpse into the manual and then you begin to walk in obedience. You know, obedience is the passcode that takes you into another season in that manual. In every season that you walk in, in your manual, you are a different personality. You know, what, what determines your personality in God is the measure of the spirit you carry. You know the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord shall come upon you and you shall be changed into another man. For every new measure of his spirit that your vessel can contain, the personality that that spirit will project is different. So there are many men in you by the spirit. But it is when you enter into another measure of the workings of his spirit, you become another person because another part of the manual will begin to find expression. I'm a great lover of Benny Hinn. Black hair, jet black hair. Until it started becoming gray and now it's white. Followed, I saw the way he ministers and all kinds of stuff. And I've seen that man change into different men. And that is how the civilization of God in territories is supposed to bring about changes consistent to the manual because the manual is in the spirit. It was the personality that was withdrawn from this physical civilization that gave it up to vanity. Every life will be vain at some point if you do not enter into your recommended seasons to explore the bounties of God that are trapped therein. In heaven, it's a place of bliss. Because we see the spirit of God manifested in his capacity to the fullest extent. He is the transport system. He is, he is, he is, he is the food. He is the food resource. He is in everything that is in that civilization is the spirit of God expressed in one way or the other. He is the essence of the civilization in that realm. So when God decided that the implication of your regeneration is that he introduces his spirit into your heart, is that um, you have now received the hope of walking in the fullness of the civilization that he has brought into you. What we are trusting God for on the individual level is that God, as God is ministering to his servants let, let portals of grace be open so that each and every one can collide with another face of his manual through the spirit of God. That's the first thing. And then secondly, territorially, let the intensity of our incense be so strong that the sorcerers and the wizards that have barometers, the ones that measure and see that the destiny of witchcraft is no longer guaranteed within the territory. You know, there's an instrument. It's that instrument that was consulted before the curious books were gathered. Witchcraft no longer has a place here. So we need to change into the manual. We're also praying that our territory will reach that tipping point. Where the fires of witchcraft can no longer burn. And that script that is being written within the territory is written in blood and written in sorrow and written in depression. We know that that script is not in the manual. That God will overtake that script and raise for himself an army of men that intercede that will provide life and power sufficient to drive the revival into the Islamic knot so mightily grew the counsel of God that it prevailed over witchcraft, it prevailed over every other thing that was the trend in the time. That's the expectation that we are trusting God to bring to pass in these days. Hallelujah. Finally, for 12 years, I sat in the office of a teacher After 12 years dispensing 
the word of God. As a teacher. God now told me, I'm going to open the office of a prophet to you. But you know it's not by power. And it's not by might. So I received that word, but the manifestation of that word was not available until I received an impartation. When I received that impartation, I could start with teaching and walk into the prophetic office until I received more education. And it told me how to move from office to office. That was not a possibility in those 12 years which was after those 12 years on the strength of that impartation there was a kind of understanding that came and some education took place and then more room was created hallelujah there was once upon a time in my life if you put me on a crusade platform I will come down my anointing does not make it to a crusade altar the moment I mount the podium the anointing will go because of that I encourage people to go for preaching crusade I can pray for them but I will not climb them and it came to pass we are holding one meeting here and prayers we are going on prayers so they began to pray for me began to pray for me began to pray for me after that prayer I now noticed that I had an invitation to preach in a crusade I was not told it was a crusade before I got there if not I wouldn't have gone When I stood on the altar, the anointing didn't go. That was how I started preaching on crusades. That I so preached that somebody said, this evangelist. I said, you see, there are many men in you that can only be unveiled if there's another measure of the spirit of God. Our prophetic destiny, which is the word of the Lord for Nigeria, we keep hanging until the Spirit brings the manual, the workability, the empowerment for us to live up to the expectation of what God intends by His inner design. Except the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. The wilderness will become a fruitful field. And a fruitful field shall be counted for a forest. We are trusting God that those changes that come because the Spirit makes a deposit of the initial and original working principle will take over our lives in the name of Jesus.